there is this completely underexplored domain of life forms which have never been described or never been identified. It's not a simple story. There's thousands of these things. We don't know what most of them do. How do they all work together and, and, and what's the best way to live with them? Technological changes have made it possible to do things that we weren't otherwise able to do. But at the moment, those technologies have really stayed in the lab. So we wanted to try and take those technologies out of the lab and to bring them into people's houses to allow people to experiment on the microbiome in their houses. Public engagement has been central to the design of this project right from its inception. We were very keen that we could include our recruited households in the actual design of the experiments that we were carrying out. The idea behind this research is to find out what people would ask about the bacterial communities in their kitchens if they had the scientific tools to do so and how it would change the way they live with bacteria in their kitchens when they found out the answers. So a microbiome is an ecology, so it's a collection of living organisms, i.e. the bacteria that live in, on and around us, that are invisible to the naked eye. And they're, not, they're not even species. The ideas of how we classify other organisms in the world just don't apply to microorganisms. So it's fascinating and a bit confusing. And I thought it sounded like great fun. I immediately knew that I would really like to get involved. And I thought it would be a great thing to do with my daughter as well. We as participants in the research are able to throw back questions to the researchers and help define how the, how the research is going. What we've primarily been working on is collecting a group of households here in Oxford. At each meeting, the group comes up with an idea and we design an experiment which they go away and do after the group meeting. We've had three experiments so far. We did an initial kitchen safari in which uh, participants mapped five consistent sites across uh, their kitchens. And then we gave them a sixth swab to sample somewhere they wanted to themselves in the kitchen. And people chose different things. Some people were interested in what lived on their bins. We have someone's cat. My daughter's chair. The inside of the fridge. Someone's sourdough starter kit. And guinea pig beds and that sort of thing. They'd swab these different surfaces and then put the swabs in their freezer to make sure that the DNA doesn't break down. And then when it comes to collection day, they'd put those in a, in a small sandwich bag and I'd go and pick them up and I'd take them into the laboratory. As part of the experiment, we got this uh, colouring in sheet, which is exactly the sort of thing my daughter gets very excited by, but I do too, apparently. And it was an opportunity for us to colour in according to how diverse we thought different parts of the kitchen were. So using one colour for the most diverse and uh, one colour for less diverse. And uh, my daughter's chair and handles were um, very diverse, but actually the kitchen sink and chopping boards were not amongst the most diverse. The less disturbed sites in the kitchen, the corners of the floor that you might not clean very often, have emerged as very interesting ecological sites, sites that in some ways have a, a fairly stable community of microbes that are potentially as clean if we take cleanliness as a safe space rather than a place marked by the absence of dirt as a well-washed chopping board. Showing that you can't necessarily equate that diversity that we've seen in the results with dirty, dirtiness or cleanliness. I think the, the study as a whole is challenging our concept of what cleanliness means. So I think that, that's one really interesting aspect of it. As a participatory form of, um, of research, this isn't about saying, well, how do we communicate stuff we already know to a public that doesn't know about it? This is a piece of research that says, we don't know a lot about this, why don't we get together with a bunch of people and, and find out together. Why don't we democratise the process of finding out about this new frontier of life that surrounds us, but do it with people rather than just trying to tell them what we found out after we've looked. Public engagement with the microbiome is a relatively new thing, but we wanted to take that into a more radical form of public engagement where people would actually get to shape the very research agenda from, from the very beginning. I think this kind of experiment offers a real opportunity for people to actually get some experience of, of what scientists do and how research is done. And so I think it can be a really empowering thing. I, can, uh, I think it could be a way to participate in, in some of the exciting stuff which is going on in our world and a way to learn about the world around us.